Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I'm glad you're all blessed and highly flavored. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. It's a lot better than Friday Night Live. Or is it Saturday Night Live? No, Friday Night Live is wonderful. Too. Glory to God. God is good when? All the time. You know, he says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen? That knowledge is not worldly knowledge. It's spiritual knowledge. Getting understanding from the throne room of God. Having a relationship. He's not looking for perfect people. Amen? In fact, look at us. We sure weren't perfect, man. We're the heathens above heathens. Hallelujah. Serving everything but God at one time. But then when he shows up and changes you, it's different. When he touches you, it's different. And we want to touch from God all the time. We can see what's going on in the world, and if you don't understand, I pray you get understanding. The Antichrist regime is active. They're, all, they're no longer in the closet. They're on your front lawn. Amen? There's no hiding at all because they know their time is short, so they're going to take out as many as they can. Their purpose is to depopulate the world to, 5, 000, to 500,000 people. Imagine that. But the body of Christ is raising up, finally, coming into unity. We are in a war. We've been in a war. Since you've been born, you were born in a war. And every day is a battle. And if you're not in a battle, you will become a casualty. There's no doubt about it. Somehow, some way, you'll become a casualty. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, would you go there with me? Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Would you read it with me? Now the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, expressly says, so he's trying to get everybody's attention. It's almost like he's shaking you. Expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Yes. Some will depart from the faith. How many of y'all know there's a falling away? It's tremendous right now. Do you know they did a survey of over a million something so-called Christians? And only 67% 60, of them do not believe in the Holy Spirit. It's incredible. It's shameful. He says, Many will fall from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits. These are lying voices of the air. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Wow. So these are lying voices of the air that people are going to be deceived because it's going to the mind and imagination through indoctrination of things written and to be read. These things are able to alter the minds of humanity. These demonic forces are altering the minds of humanity. In fact, right now, what it does is bring an individual into mental captivity. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. It says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with hot iron. In other words, that conscience is the voice of God to them. It's been seared, so they can't even get convicted. They reject it. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Again, these are lying voices of the air that affect the mind and imaginations. There's also, the, they use also doctrines, which is what we call indoctrination of things that are written to be read, able to alter the minds of humanity, removing the righteous conviction by searing the conscience voice of God. It brings the carnal mind into a state of mental captivity. They utilize weapons like music, movies, media, education, 
books, relationships, drugs, mind-altering drugs. Look how many people are on drugs. How many people are mental drugs? Mind-altering drugs. Pornography. The atmosphere is toxic right now. Medical injections, you know, prescriptions and stuff to that degree that are messing with people's minds. Many of them have side effects. Alter, they're, they're mood altering. And there are also frequencies that move the minds and the hearts of individuals. We are in a time right now where there's such a bombardment all over. We are hard pressed everywhere. And the purpose of the enemy is trying to bring the mental state of an individual into captivity to control them. Is everybody okay? Let me show you something and go to Genesis 3. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 4. Now we know that the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, right? And in verse 4 it says, And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. In other words, because the Lord already told them that if they ate of the tree, they were going to die. Or if they partook of it. For, and he says, For God knows in the day that you eat, your, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God. Well, they're already like God. They're already in the image and likeness of God. The serpent was trying to get them mentally into captivity so that he can impart something into them. A new voice. A new way. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree was desirable to make one wise... She took of its fruit, ate, and also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. In other words, their eyes changed. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. So now they were in shame. They heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, because at one time they saw him face to face. But now, since they partook and were disobedient, everything changed. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. When they used to run to him, now they are running from him. Because something happened. Then the Lord called to Adam and said to him, where are you at? Where are you be, man? Like he didn't know. And Adam said, I heard your voice because I couldn't see you no more. In the garden. And I was what? Afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. Now look what the Lord says to him. He says, who told you that? Who told you that? Where did that other voice come from? Who told you this? See, for me and you, we should be monitoring our thoughts because not every thought is yours. If you can unzip the spirit realm, and look and see all these spirits that come up to you and approach you every day and try to speak to you and flip you out. He says, who told you that? The partaking of deceptive influence caused blindness to them, to the spirit realm. They could no longer see the angels. They could no longer see God. It caused blindness and separation from God's presence and also caused them a loss of immortality. And what occurred, then they became emotional captivity, an emotional captivity to fear. Another mindset, not from God, but from the wicked. With the desires of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Ephesians chapter 2. The world has been taken into mental captivity. Fear. 
people are running to go get poked instead of running from it. Ephesians chapter 2. In verse 1, Ephesians 2, 1 through 3, let's speak it together. Mental captivity. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Every one of us did. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath as the others. The prince of power of air, frequency, sound waves, toxic environment. The prince of power of air, that's attacking people's thoughts. Second Corinthians 4. Who told you that? I say that to a lot of people. I'm sick. Who told you that? I'm afraid. Who told you that? I'm not worthy. Who told you that? My dad wouldn't tell you that. 2 Corinthians 4. I'm an addict. Who told you that? Hallelujah. The lie of once an addict, always an addict. Boy, is that a lie, huh? Thank God. In verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled or blinded, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Whose minds, remember we just talked about this. The God of this age has blinded. In other words, they've been taken into mental captivity and don't even know it. Who do not believe that we're believe means to follow. Lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. The minds blinded to the truth, controlled and maintained by the constant bombardment of ungodly, worldly influence. Anybody ever seen The Matrix? That's a reality there. Amen? So they finally got unplugged. That's what happens when you get, come to Jesus. You get unplugged. Now you got to make sure you don't get replugged. Amen. Praise God. That's what the falling away is. People have gotten replugged. They've gone back to the ways of the world. Second Timothy two. Mental captivities. Remember, this is the focus of the powers of darkness to keep mankind into a mental state of captivity and control them. And until people finally look at the area of who's telling me this? Where is this influence coming from? See, people are not monitoring anything. They just think whatever and speak whatever. And what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. That's how people curse themselves. We have to break those labels off all the time. 2 Timothy 2.20. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. How many of y'all want to be for honor? <laughs> Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from his past or his later, latter, he will be a vessel of what? Honor. So there's got to be a process of cleansing yourself from your past and all the emotional attachments of your life, ancestral curses, Self-imposed curses. 
and getting things cleaned up so that as you are a new creation in Christ, old things have passed away. That scripture is a process of fulfillment in an area where we are converting our soul and the Holy Spirit is in regenerating us as much as we allow him to. Everything takes cooperation. Without cooperation, there is no advancement. Amen? Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call out on the Lord with a pure heart. You know, associations bring impartations. Bad company corrupts good habits. Amen? Be careful who you associate with. Be careful what you approve and agree with. Be careful who you vote for. People don't even realize that you bring a curse on themselves because they vote for someone that promotes death to unborn. That brings a curse on someone. Does everybody understand that? So many people bring in curses on themselves that they don't realize it. Hallelujah. Verse 23, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant or Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses, and what? Escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive, by him to do his will. Well, look at they can't do they can't become captive unless their mind is in captivity, their thoughts, their desires. Remember, your heart is the core of all desire. You'll know someone by their desires. Those desires are also known as fruits. Hallelujah. If no pro, if no process of cutting loose by replacing lies with truth, there's no escape. Now remember, grace is the plan of escape. It begins with repentance, to expose and remove. Then you obey by cooperation with his spirit and his word. Without that cooperation, there's no escape. Grace is not automatic favor from God. You earn God's favor. I'm so tired of hearing that. Oh, I've been saved by grace. I can do whatever I want. Well, you're an idiot. Grace is God's plan to escape. Without cooperation with that plan, you won't make it home. 2 Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians 6. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Let's speak it together. Mental captivity and emotional captivity. Oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what? Affections or emotions. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Do not what? Be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why? Why? It's going to cause a problem because bad company corrupts good habits. You know, again, as a believer, we witness to our old associates, but we don't fellowship with them. You don't go sit and watch football games with them. You're just asking for trouble. Why? Because there are serpents around them. Their atmosphere is different. And if you allow that to happen, you are letting your guard down and you're getting bit and don't even know it. Hallelujah. Do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has the light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Let me share something with you before I go further. When you come in agreement with something that's unclean, you fuse an emotion to that, to that whatever is said. Does everybody under, there's a fusing there. It's fused together. So not only is it captive in the mind, but now there's a captivity of emotion to it. 
And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell on them, I will walk among them, and I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. If they do something. If they do what? Come out. Come on, read it with me. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And remember, this is emotional captivity with a touch and agree with something that's unclean. It fuses the memory to an emotion. It fuses the memory to an emotion. And creating an emotional attachment, captivity. John chapter 8, Gospel of John. In the store and you hear music from your past, it doesn't affect you. John 8, 42. Mental captivity. These are things that you and I must avoid. We must be sensitive and discerning about. Don't agree with everything. Test it. Find out if it's true or not. That's why so many people went into captivity. I mean, think about it. Look at the whole world's gone into captivity. Over a fake plague. People are lying left and right. Follow the money. You'll find the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 8, 42. Let's speak it. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded from forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Why don't people understand you? Because you are not able to listen to the words. You are of your father, the what? The devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Can you imagine Jesus speaking to the Pharisees and Sadducees? He must have freaked them out. They probably wanted to kill him. They did want to kill him. <laughs> he who is of God hears God's voice and rejects the others. The flesh is the offspring of the devil. Your flesh is the offspring of the devil. The new creation is the offspring of God. So we still carry the old man with us, don't we? You wake up with your flesh. You sleep with your flesh. But you got to take dominion over your flesh. Yourself. The old self. Remember, pride protects self. Fear protects pride. Anger protects fear. Amen? Praise God. Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. In verse 19. Praise God. Is everybody there? 519. Let's speak it together. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. And what are they? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not Inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, they've given up their eternal life. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, control over self. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, and let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Again, the works of the flesh is death. The fruits of the Spirit is life. In the anointing of Christ, the flesh is crucified. Now, the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. That's what Jesus was. He was the anointed and anointed one. In Romans 8, Romans 8. I used to be a Roman. I was a Roman Catholic, Roman for the truth. Hallelujah. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not what? Walk according to the flesh, but of what? According to the Spirit. So is there a condemnation according to the flesh? Yeah. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say there's a requirement. And it's called cooperation. Amen. And the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled. That word might means cooperation. In us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And to be carnally minded or fleshly minded, or what we call <laughs> a mind in captivity. Amen. To be carnally minded is what? To be carnally minded is what? Amen. This is called mental captivity by the enemy. It's death. But to be spiritually minded is life. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who set their minds on worldly lust of the flesh... They're unable to meet the requirement of salvation. In Philippians 2. Glory. Philippians 2 verse 12. Praise God. I know I'm moving a little quick tonight. I got about 40 scriptures left, so no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know you got kids in here tonight, and you they've been sitting a while. Praise God. Philippians 2, verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become Blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, reverence, respect, humility, honor. Not putting yourself first, but Christ. In Romans 6.
Mental captivity. Don't let the enemy snare you into that. The word tells us that the devil seeks whom he can devour. But the word also says that you and I are to be consistent, vigilant, and alert. Amen. That takes discipline. That's where the word disciple is. Discipline. Amen. Without discipline, you're not consistent. You cannot live by how you feel. You do not make decisions how you feel. If you're a person that lives by how you feel, you're dangerous. Emotions lie. Now that's Satan's doctrine. Do what you feel like. Amen? Romans 6.15 What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves, what? Slaves to obey. You are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that from that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Now I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for what? For holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah. So in this, we want to be we are slaves of righteousness. We want to be free from the slave of mental captivity. What fruit did you have then, in verse 21, in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end is what? Eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Amen. From slaves of sin to slaves of righteousness. From a slave of a mindset and captivity to freedom. Amen. I mean, when I was in the world, I thought I was free. You know, free to do whatever I wanted to do. Free in however I felt, not realizing I was under captivity. Mental captivity the whole time as an addict. Second Timothy, Second Peter 2. Here, I thought I was fighting for freedom, being rebellious. Shame on me. <laughs> now I'm anti-flesh. <laughs> Second Peter 2. Verse 18. Second Peter 2, verse 18. Let's speak here. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him also is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. It's tough, especially when people backslide. They got a process to come through now. But God is waiting for them. Does everybody understand? So why go back into it? Why go back? Go forward. Continue to go forward. Don't look back. Your past is supposed to be history. Everything is supposed to, we've, when you and I are uh, true believers and followers of Christ Jesus, we've come to a point of no return. There is no return. Everything is forward. Amen? The lure of evil from freedom to bondage is constant. 
It's constant. In 2 Corinthians 10. Hallelujah. So in the conversion process, in the regeneration process, the Holy Spirit is there to constantly infiltrate areas and bring us truth, bring us truth, bring us truth. Because truth is light, and it's going to replace and nullify the movement of darkness, especially in our minds or in our thoughts, and in our memory. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 3, for though we walk in the physical, we do not war according to the physical. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down what? Stronghold. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. It's something you agreed in. It's something you agreed with. Whether you were a kid or whatever. Somebody could have said something to you and you agreed with it. And it's affected you this whole time until it's broke. Those are called memory lies. And those memory lies are fused to an emotion. That's why some people have never been freed. They constantly recycle all the time because they've never taken the opportunity to get free, totally free. Verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every what? Thought. Who told me that? Into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. What we're doing is we're pulling these strongholds out. We're replacing these memory lies with truth. But we must bring them to light and repent for agreeing with them. So it gets cleansed by the blood and nullified. Romans 7. Romans 7. Verse 13. Seven thirteen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not, but sin that it might appear sin was producing death in me through what is good, so that sin through commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am what? Carnal, sold under the sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. What's that sin that dwells in you? It's called flesh, the old man. For I know that in me that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but to how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. Why? This is one the mind is taken captive. Because in the spirit, you have dominion over all of those things. In the flesh, you do not. For what I delight in the law of God, according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, or my thoughts, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members, which is your flesh. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then the mind I myself serve the law of God. In other words, because of the mind of Christ, I now serve the law of God, the commands of God. But with the flesh, he serves the law of what? Sin. Is everybody okay? So the mind is a servant of the commands of God. That's the mind of Christ. But the mind of the carnal is the 
servants of the commands of sin. I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. Don't agree with unclean things. Be careful of media music and blue individuals. <laughs> Those are Smurfs. Hallelujah. <laughs> They're Smurfs. They practice witchcraft, you know. Verse 15. First <laughs> John chapter 2, verse 15. That's why they're called blues. They're, they're, my, they're definitely captive, let me tell you. What does it say, verse 15? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, praise God, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, is the last hour. And you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of, of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be be made manifest that none of them were of us. In other words, their minds got, became captive again. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you what? You know all things. So what's the problem? There should be no problem. If you are led by the Spirit and you're hearing the voice of God, if you, but you can't be led by the Spirit unless you're filled. That's why it's so important that we assemble and worship. Worship is what brings God's presence and removes everything else. If you're not a worshiper yet, I encourage you to become one. It's going to take a little humble pie, amen, and a lot of breath. But that's how, you don't get anywhere without sowing in the Spirit. You must sow in the Spirit. That's how it moves the hand of God. Other than that, you're going to be moving in the flesh, and then you're going to reap corruption. I'd rather have God build the house and not me. Amen? Be careful out there. Because we're being bombarded in every area. The enemy is constantly trying to get you into a mental state of captivity. So he can manipulate us. Amen? Remember, who told me that? Where did it come from? No, I'm not going to be led how I feel. I'm going to be led by truth. I'm not making decisions by emotions. I'm making decisions by truth. But you've got to know the truth. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we also thank you for the warning so we don't get taken captive. Now, I pray each and every one here, Lord, that the seed that's been imparted will be restored to them and brought to remembrance so that they can break loose of all strongholds, memory lies, and entanglements and affairs of this world and be free in the spirit and free in the mind with fellowship with the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Give somebody a hug in here and say, you did it. <laughs>